I was driving and I see this boat that is all rusty and really horrible <laughs> but great for pictures so uh, I feel like making a few pictures of it so uh, let's go for it so I'm Eric Gibo, ericgibo.com and uh, this situation reminds me of a video I, I recorded a few months ago I'll leave you the link here a car that I found that was completely burnt I made pictures of uh, the car okay the rust and all this and uh, I see this this is all rusty and wrecked and uh, well noise <laughs> okay so uh, at that time with the car I already I only had with me uh, my Fujifilm X100V today is different because I've got the Fujifilm X100V with me I've got my Hasselblad 907X with the digital back and then I've got my Olympus OM system OM1 so which one should I use well uh, I think the uh, X100V and the Hasselblad are out. Why? Because I've got on both, I've got a lens that is equivalent to 35 millimeter, and I cannot really get really close to the boat. Okay, so I think I'm going to use my OM uh, system, my OM1, with the 40 to 150 millimeter equivalent to for, to uh, 80 to 300 millimeter if it was full frame. So this way I can get some close-up, okay? But still, although it's a zoom, I try to get uh, to, to be uh, uh, to have some discipline, and it means that uh, I will not use like 40, 50, 60, 70, all this. I would go like three steps: uh, wide angle and uh, the long, well, the widest angle, and the longest one and a middle in the middle, okay? So it gives consistency to the reportage to not be touching the zoom all the time okay so let's get the gear so here's my baby with uh, a sunshade it looks longer than reality okay uh, always put the sunshade because it avoids like a uh, uh, side light that would uh, maybe have some flare or also uh, take away some contrast okay uh, but that's it okay very important when you speak about the sunshade okay sunshade has many many advantage many but I saw a video of a French guy on YouTube, I can't remember the name, okay, sorry, and explained that it could be a problem sometime, and he proved it. Yes, when weather is really cold and you have uh, your uh, camera at home, you put it in the bag, then you go out and shoot, then this sunshade is so large that it creates like a microclimate in there, and uh, it makes that you get some uh, a bit uh, a bit foggy in there okay so you your picture are not that sharp so it's important or you don't use the, the sunshade in that situation or simply you wait to have the lens at the same temperature as the outdoor temperature okay so it will not create some uh, uh like i can't call that i mean you have on your uh, on the lens like you have on your glasses sometimes so avoid it this way okay so it's important don't forget if you see the pictures are not that sharp that could be the problem okay so first thing i've noticed uh, 40 millimeter equivalent 80 millimeter the boat is big and i'm close so it's hard for me to get the full shot of the boat which is not a problem i can uh, step back okay or actually i want to have uh, details of the boat okay i think it's more interesting so i'll probably make a shot that you see the full boat from a bit further but otherwise i will uh, work on details okay second uh, I will work on 2.8, not that I'm a fan of really shallow depth of field, but in this case I think it's interesting to get details, okay? So uh, to make them stand out, I will work on 2.8. So I'm going to go away to get a full shot of the boat, okay? Uh, I'm going to make most pictures in horizontal, so you actually uh, see them better on screen, okay? Uh, that's, that's far, eh? okay? Okay, here I am okay wow that, but this is really the colors are just beautiful okay and also because it's really cloudy today so i think that helps uh to get the colors really different uh but i really love it really beautiful okay i think when you make pictures like this you need to have uh, some uh, organization very often uh, people people that see uh, that do uh, your bags or things like this abandoned uh, places or cars or whatever they just go like if it was a chinese buffet and they go and eat everything like if they were going to get the the food out of them and they could not eat anything so no no you have to uh, be really organized and try to go by phase you know decide what you want to do and work on it this is the best way not to forget interesting part okay in this case you have left right front and back okay uh, i 
don't know the word in in, uh, in English for uh, the maritime uh, wording in French. Yes, I know. Okay, poop, poop, tribord, babor. Okay, but in English, I don't know it. Okay, so I'm going to work uh, left side impossible. Uh, would be in the water. Front side impossible for two reasons. Well, it, I could, but really there is a, 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 a limit here. Okay, that I have to go around, and then it would be against the sun, so it would not be that nice. Okay. And so I'm going to work on this uh, three three quarter back and uh, make the picture on this side. Okay. So when I check the boat, I see there are several things that I'm really interested in. Uh, one are uh, this. I don't know. You call that winch? I don't know if you call that winch. Uh, that several like this. I would like to have at least one that comes out good. Okay. Then you have texture element that are really interesting. Then you have some uh, rope and uh, that, that looks really uh, like burnt. I think there was a fire on this boat because the front is really painted and the back is really rusty. I think there was a fire on board probably because uh, many things look like uh, burnt, okay? So I want to work on different elements. Maybe I will get some element that shows that it's really a boat. I'm not sure, okay? But I'm going to start making picture and see how this comes out, okay? It's really interesting this. I really love these things, but uh, it's important to check the uh, exposure because uh, it's really uh, cloudy today. So the background uh, comes out uh, really uh, white, clear, okay? I'm on 2.8, so uh, the, uh, the depth of field is really shallow. Although this is micro four third, it's not as shallow if it was uh, full frame or APS-C or medium format. But still, I have to decide exactly where to uh, focus because uh, otherwise, if I don't choose precisely where I want the, uh, the person who sees the picture uh, to have his eye to go exactly there, uh, this picture is going not to look that good. Okay, so it's important you decide exactly where to focus, okay? The fact that I don't want to touch the zoom uh, make me walk a lot forward or backward to uh, frame as I want. Uh, it's important. I mean, the perspective of your picture is decided by the distance between your camera and the subject, okay? In this case, probably you would not notice that much difference. But if I was doing a reportage with people, the fact that I'm closer or further from them will change the way they look. It will change the shape of the face, okay? <laughs> They're uh, wider or narrower, okay? So it's important that although you have a zoom lens, try to decide like uh, two, uh, three or four way to split it and use it as three or four uh, prime focal length. So it gives uh, consistency to your reportage, okay? Something that is really important too is uh, to check where the sun is coming from for two reasons. Uh, first, have the right light on your subject and second, because of your shadow. Now it's cloudy, so it's not much of a problem, but very often I see pictures or sometimes I even make pictures myself and I see my shadow and this is a problem. So if you uh, have this problem and you want to integrate the, your shadow in the picture, that's fine. But because you decide, not because it's there. Okay, so in this case, it's a bit di would be a bit difficult because it's just in the axis. I would probably uh, have my shadow on the side if it was not cloudy, okay? But uh, make sure to check where the sun is coming from because of this. Something else. Uh, luckily, I've got a great uh, IBIS on this camera. It's really a uh, stabilization, it's fantastic. Because uh, without stabilization on an equivalent 300 millimeter, I could not shoot under one hundredth of a second in theory, okay? Or the picture would be blurred, okay? In this case, it's, uh, well, it's not sunny, but there is a lot of light. I'm on one thousandth of a second, so no problem anyway, okay? But what you will notice, although this is really large, a really big boat, 
it moves a lot really a lot so when you're actually framing you think that's fine if you take your time framing is gone because the boat has moved okay so although it's that massive that big you must work fast when you have your framing you should okay speaking about moving uh, you will notice that uh, it moves on a regular base okay it goes down then goes up all this but really regular okay so you must almost breathe at the same rhythm okay so it will help you when you frame you're not surprised that all of a sudden it goes up and then goes down you just know that up to here is going up and, and then it's going down okay so you just start to follow the rhythm okay that helps a lot to frame okay important uh, tele lens normally they have a, uh, like a support like this to go on the tripod so it's more balanced normally i should move it on the side so it would be easier to hold the lens although it doesn't bother me but uh, if you notice that your uh, leg like this is bothering you you just turn it sideways and that's it okay well easy yeah you just uh, loose it get it loose okay and then you tie it back and you put it up and it doesn't bother you anymore that's simple okay Don't forget that uh, when you're doing picture on the side, uh, downside, uh, the shallow depth of field, because I'm on 2.8, may uh, do problems if you want to have like uh, the number plates completely in focus. That's not possible. You, you will have to close your aperture, okay? But in my case, I don't have any commitment to have the, the right picture or whatever, so I'll leave it on 2.8. But yes, take into account that although you would do the full uh, look with 2.8 if you want some element to be fully in focus make sure make sure that if you're uh, downside or upside uh, the distance is not the same on the the higher part and the lower part of your picture so you probably have to close a bit the aperture okay i keep on 2.8 anyway in my case okay So I could be here for hours. Uh, people who make that kind of picture, they spend hours and hours and hours, but I don't have that much time. And second, I'm not sure I will check again this picture later uh, many times. So for me to uh, demonstrate what I wanted to explain, the few techniques, a few tips, uh, the way of organizing, the way I do. Uh, some people will do probably completely different and they get a great picture, okay? So uh, it's just uh, like uh, an exchange of uh, opinion and uh, I will read your comments, okay? But I wanted to show you how I see an opportunity, get my camera, and the way I organize myself when I make the picture, okay? Uh, that had fantastic picture, just, well, speaking and doing picture at the same time is not that easy anyway, okay? So, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you liked it. And if you feel it may interest other people, please share it on social networks. If you have not done it yet, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Small button down here, so small bell. If you click on the bell, get notified when I upload a new video. My website, ericgipo.com. If you have any question, you can leave a comment below. Also, leave your links of my gear on Amazon, links of everything I reviewed by KF Concepts, Sandmark, and Flashes by Westcott, and other link of affiliated uh, product i've got uh, brand so if there is anything you like there please use my link that really helps me and also i'll leave you a link of my paypal account in case you wanted to make a donation so thank you so much please take care of yourself and see you soon bye